Hello everybody, this is a new series that focuses on the CTMU, or otherwise known as the Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe. So, <clears throat> what are we going to be talking about in this series? Well, firstly, this is an introductory video, an introductory installment in the series, so we're going to be talking about the very, very basics. We're going to be talking about the principles, the most, you know, general principles, so that you guys have a macro understanding of what the CTMU is trying to convey. And so, what is the CTMU trying to convey? Well, the most surface-level proposition that you could extract from the CTMU is probably the one that reality is a language. That's the most general explanation of the CTMU structure. It's that reality is a language. Okay? Now, what does this mean? Now, in order to figure out what this means, we have to understand two things. We have to first understand what reality is, and secondly, we have to understand what language is. Now, reality is largely undefined by the people that use the term, so let's actually define it. What, what is reality? And the common definition that is used usually is all that which exists, and I think that is a sufficient definition and it is an efficient one as well. So I believe that that is the perfect definition for there to be of the word reality and in the context of real uh, of a reality theoretic framework it is the best description of what we're trying to convey when we say reality and the underlying implications behind that word and what is what it is trying to categorize i believe that to be the best description because it is the best <laughs> description but so that's what a large reality is we're not going to get into the large identification or like the specific um, identifications of parts of reality, such as what it does, why why it does it, how it does it, and uh, we're not gonna get into all that. Okay, um, we're gonna get onto that in later videos and in later installments of this series. Now, what is a language? Now, language is in the most general form an algebraic structure, as in it includes attributes, operators, descriptors, and all that which a language is known to be composite of. But language in the colloquial sense and in the sense that it is defined on, say, uh, it, it, in the sense that it is used in linguistics, it is a form of verbal human communication through speech, writing, or gesture, right? And that's like the Google definition of the Oxford. Uh, dictionary de uh, definition but this obviously is derived from a certain set of attributes now since language is about communication the question becomes how does communication relate to reality now this also gets us to one of the most fundamental principles of the CTMU which is the reality principle now what is the reality principle it is a very, very, very simple statement of the definition of reality. So the reality principle basically says that nothing can exist outside of reality because reality is all of that which exists. Now, obviously, you can understand that if something to, were to exist outside of reality, then it would exist and it would be within reality. So there truly is nothing outside of reality because for there to be is for there to exist. And for there to exist, it must be within reality because reality is all that which exists. Now, reality communicates with itself because it expresses itself. Now, this can be taken quite literally because reality without its self-expression would not exist. It expresses itself and it expresses itself to itself, which is the very essence of communication, right? Because there is nothing else it can communicate to other than itself, because what is there outside of reality for, their, for it to communicate to, 
right? Now, wh why is it that it is communicating, right? So, when reality exists, reality exists for its own purposes. Because the only purpose that can be defined within reality is by reality itself. And the only way it can execute this, this uh, goal or purpose, I guess you could say, is by self-communication and self-expression. Now, it does through it does so through operators, attributes, descriptors, etc., etc., all that good stuff which a language contains. That is why, in the most general form of a language, which is an algebraic structure, it applies to the model of a reality theoretic framework. So that is why reality is a language, is because it represents all of the key fundamental attributes and properties of a language. <laughs> Great, so what do we do with this information? Why is this important? Why is the CTMU trying to convey this? What, what is it trying to convey when, he, when it makes this connection, right? So a lot of people hold the view that the universe is so mechanistic in a sense that it is non-agent, as in it is not aware of itself. It's just kind of this dumb machine that you know, operates in sort of particles, and we don't know why it just does, and, you know, we can't make claims about its fundamental nature as on why it exists. We just observe and we make hypotheses, and we test whether they are applicable in certain situations, and we make inductive guesses based upon that. And it's a tedious process, and it is fulfilled with assumptions. Now, what the CTMU tries to do, and what I believe it does successfully, is that it takes a route of, ca of deriving the nature of reality through its deductive parts, right? So, very fundamental characteristics that reality has by definition, and we can extend that to understand and come at an understanding of the very fundamental nature of reality, which science does not contend with. So that is what the CTMU is trying to convey when it makes the connection between reality being a language and reality being self-contained, which is the self-containment of reality, right? Now this is deductive, right? We can understand from the definition of what a language is and the definition of what <laughs> reality is, we can deduce that the two are fundamentally linked. The two are ultimately inseparable. All right. So there's a deductive conclusion that we come at because, so for example, if we were to say that all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, then <laughs> Socrates, by extension, by transitivity, would be mortal. Same thing that we're applying to the reality self-containment inference and the connection between language and reality, okay? It's deductive, and it gets us to an understanding of the fundamental nature of reality and how it executes itself. So we understand on the most macro, on the mac most macro level, a framework within which reality operates as a language. It communicates with itself. Okay, and it does so through attributes, operators, and descriptors, and fucking whatever else can, is contained within a system of an algebraic structure. Okay, so that is that. Is that.